Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today's experiment, number four, we are going to be studying uh, uh, something called elasticity. Now, many of you, when you think of solids, you don't think of solids as uh, being elastic. But if you actually were to twist solids through small angles or stretch solids uh, by small amounts and release the force, they will return back exactly to where they started from. Now, of course, if you over twist or over uh, stretch solids, they'll behave uh, something like, um, like toffee, as I mentioned uh, to some of you earlier. Um, they'll become permanently deformed. So once the force is actually removed, they will not spring back to their original shape. Now, why are we interested in studying uh, uh, the elastic properties of solids? Well, um, uh, engineers build large structures made out of solids, like bridges and buildings and things like that. And um, they need to be able to uh, design buildings that uh, use materials that have the, the proper elastic uh, uh, properties. And, um, and, and that's why um, they need to know uh, certain quantities or numbers um, like shear modulus for twisting and Young's modulus for twisting. Why? Because engineers need numbers to compare one um, elastic property of one solid with the elastic properties of another solid. So when they designed uh, math, uh, massive structures um, like the CN Tower, um, they don't pick materials that are too elastic. Otherwise, um, um, when there's lots of weight and lots of heat, uh, the CN Tower would probably go like this, you know, and you want it to, uh, to stay upright, okay? And at the same time, be flexible enough, you know, under high winds and things like that, uh, to actually bend a little bit and spring back to its original shape without breaking too, right? So, um, so the two setups that we're going to be using today to study the elastic properties of solids is this setup over here, which I will describe first, and another setup that's against the wall over here, okay? Now, um, first let me describe this setup. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to twist this wire. There's a wire that's attached at these two fixed points. There's two little screws at these two points that hold the wire firmly at those two locations. Um, at the end of this wire, um, it's attached to a protractor, okay, which is free to rotate. This other end of the wire is attached to this uh, uh, rod, which is fixed in, in space. It doesn't move, right? So this will be our fixed point, and um, this end of the wire, which is attached to the protractor, uh, will allow us to measure how much of a twisting we have in the wire, total twisting, okay? Now, how are we going to achieve this? We have um, a string attached to a disc underneath the, the protractor. We are going to wrap the string around the disc. There's a little groove around the edges of the disc, okay? And um, when we apply a force, okay, there will be now a torque. Uh, why a torque? A force times a radius, right? So we, we, we um, uh, 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 create a torque that uh, forces this um, uh, wire to twist, okay? And, um, and uh, how much of a torque do we have? Well, torque is equal to radius times the force. Um, if we pass the string, this string over a pulley and attach one mass, what is the force of gravity this way? It's um, the, uh, the mass times g, okay, because it's in a gravitational field. And what will the tension be then along uh, this string? It would be equal to the, the gravitational force, okay? So the tension on the string is equal to the gravitational force. Because we're not pulling at the center of the disc, we're pulling at a radius r, we have a turning power or a torque. And what is the torque equal to? The radius of the disc times the force. Does that make sense? And um, what we're going to do is um, we are going to determine how much of a twisting will take place with this little pointer here. And as we add discrete masses, discrete masses, we've actually now, oops, let me, there's hooks on both ends of these masses. There we go. You attach it to the end of the string here. As, um, as you've doubled um, the force, um, 
you will notice that the uh, uh, twisting has also doubled too. Okay. Now, you are going to plot these um, on graph paper that's provided here. And um, when you plot your data points of mass and uh, amount of twisting on this graph, you will see that it's a linear relationship. And in your lab manual, it tells you that um, when you plot uh, the strain versus uh, the stress, you do get a linear relationship if you are within the elastic uh, uh, range of the solids. Okay, Because once you release the force, what will happen to the angle in this case? It would return back to its original position. Okay, Of course, uh, if we added uh, a lot more force, we would get um, a permanent de deformation in the wire and it wouldn't go back. So it wouldn't be a linear relationship. Okay, So um, that's um, basically what you do in this experiment. There's um, um, a few things now that um, you need to know about uh, how to measure the thickness of this wire and uh, what the radius of this disc will be and what else, um, and also the length of the wire that we're using. Now, the length of the wire can simply be measured with a tape measure, okay? And because there's two little screws here, one uh, over here and one over here which have broken off, um, these are the two uh, places where the wire is clamped to the disc and also to this fixed point. So the uh, length of wire that is subject to twisting is between those two fixed points. So you just measure the distance between those two fixed points, okay? So that will be our length of the wire, okay? Then um, uh, I'll get to the thickness of the wire in a second. Um, let's say uh, next we want to determine what the radius of this disc is. Well, if you notice, this disc is actually a little bit smaller than the, the diameter of the protractor, okay? And it also has a groove uh, along its perimeter to allow the string to be wrapped around it, you know, so it doesn't slip, right? So, um, what is its radius? Well, you can measure uh, with the ruler from the center of the disc to the edge of um, this disc, and then subtract a couple of millimeters, which is the depth of the groove that the string is wrapped around it. So that would be how you would determine the radius. Or, if you're more mathematically inclined and want to uh, do it a different technique, you can use this white string, okay? It uh, doesn't stretch, and what uh, some students prefer to do is wrap the string around the perimeter of the disc, like this, and where the string overlaps, they mark it with a, a pen or a pencil, and then they measure the distance between the two marks. And the distance between the two marks is uh, the circumference, and from that, you can determine what uh, the radius of the disk would be, okay? So you can do, uh, do it one of two ways.